Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10 and support the channel at the same time. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends. And we just came off a pretty exciting weekend if you're a fan of Standard. We saw the Star City Games Dallas Open and the Standard Classic this weekend. This was the first time we got to see the beginnings of the new Standard meta. So this is the first weekend we got to play with the Rivals of Ixalan cards. And also, we're coming off of the banning of four major cards in Standard. So we saw a lot of new decks, a lot of new things going on. A lot of old decks kind of revamped as well. So we're going to look at all of the results, zero in on some of the interesting deck lists, and talk about the role rivals of Ixalan cards in particular played in those decks. Now quickly, before we get started though, just a fast reminder, if you check out the description below, you'll find a few ways to help support the channel if you're looking to do so. Patreon is linked down there, that's one way. Also, you'll find some links to products on Amazon. If you make any purchases from Amazon, once you go through that first link, whatever you do buy, we get a small percentage. And then finally, also Flipside Gaming, you saw at the top of the show, they still have a promo code. You can hopefully save yourself some cash and support us at the same time. With that being said, let's get into it, starting with the results of the Star City Games Open. It's important to note that the Star City Games Open this time was actually a team tournament. So not only was Standard play, but also Legacy and Modern. That's what you're seeing the results here. Now we're going to zero in on Standard, but I do want to say congratulations to Julian John, Kevin King, and Jonathan Rossum, who took the tournament down playing, first off, Mardu Vehicles and Standard. More on that in a few moments. But also Lands for Legacy and Humans Deck, our hot deck of the month from November, was the deck that took this tournament down from the Modern point of view. Now keep in mind, as we look at these results, we're also going to look at the Classic in just a few seconds, but when we look at the Open results... I mean, the standard decks, I mean, they may have been carried by powerful modern or legacy decks some of the time. It just depends on the matchups and such. But still, you will notice that a lot of the decks that did well here also did well in the standard classic. So it feels like they're pretty consistent. So we have Mardu Vehicles coming in first place. In second place, we got Green Black Constrictor. Third place was Assault High Energy deck. Fourth place, our standard deck was Mardu Vehicles again, interestingly enough. In 5th place, we got Red Black Aggro, and then in 6th place, we got Teamer Monsters. This was a Teamer Monsters build. We did see a lot of Gruel Monsters. They were very similar. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. 7th place in Standard was Grixis Control, and then 8th place was Blue Black Control. Now, in a few moments, we'll take a look at some of these deck lists, but we're also going to look at some of the ones that fell outside of the top 8 as well. And over here, this is our Star City Games Classic results. We have two mono red aggro decks right at the top, one and two. So kind of like Ramanab Red, but obviously it had to change a little bit due to the bannings and some new cards coming in did change the look of the deck at least a little bit. Then in third place, we'll talk more about this deck too. Actually, a really cool one. White Blue Auras, something very different. Mardu Vehicles came in fourth. We have Green Red Monsters coming in fifth. Mardu Vehicles at sixth. Teamer Dinosaurs, seventh place. So Dinosaur deck and it was in Teamer Colors. And then, of course, Mardu Vehicles in 8th. So let's start looking at some of these deck lists. We're going to go back to the Open first and take a look at the Mardu Vehicles list. So nothing too surprising here. I think Mardu Vehicles actually did well this weekend because a lot of people weren't maybe expecting it. It was kind of off the radar. I think a lot of players figured, well, you got a Braid in the format. Now, I mean, there's even Shatter if Push came to shove and a red deck was really worried about a Vehicles deck or a Artifact-centric strategy. But the truth of the matter is... Probably week one, no one's going to be running Shatters, right? Unless something like this became really powerful. So they didn't really have to worry about that. Naturalized could be an issue, and there were a few decks playing Naturalized, which we'll see in a few moments. But I think because of the amount of artifact destruction, I think a lot of people weren't thinking about Mardu Vehicles. So the people that gambled and decided to run it did pretty well this weekend. Will that continue week two, week three, week four? We'll have to kind of wait and see how the meta digests this. But at least for this week, Marta Vehicles looked pretty good and didn't look very different, quite honestly. I mean, you know this deck pretty well at this point. Heart of Kirins, Ether Spear Harvesters, Lightning Strikes, Unlicensed Disintegration, Bowmat Courier, etc., etc. One card, though, that did make it into the sideboard, which was a new card, was Angreth the Flame Chain, just as a one of. So, kind of interesting. But for the most part, the deck was pretty much intact the way it used to be. Let's look at the Constrictor deck now with Green Black Constrictor. This is another deck that maybe is starting to fall off the radar a little bit, but of course with the changes in the meta, especially considering the bannings, this deck does become a little bit better, and we definitely saw that this weekend. So again, this is a deck you're probably pretty familiar with, a lot of the same cards back again, but 
couple notable changes and some real big changes that actually really help this deck. Ravenous Chupacabra, fantastic card, and Jade Light Ranger. These are two all-stars this weekend. You're going to see these appear in a number of different decks as we go through the video today. But both of these are just fantastic cards to include from Rivals of Ixalan. Completely makes sense not only in this build, but many others. Jade Light Ranger is just tons of value for three mana. Ravenous Chupacabra is just a great way to put pressure on your opponent while digging into their board state. Out of the sideboard, we also saw Golden Demise and Naturalize. Third place, we saw Dan Jessup with Saltai Energy. And Saltai Energy, I mean, it was kicking around. actually looked pretty good this weekend. So even though we did lose some energy-centric cards with the banning, I mean, the deck can still exist. I mean, we're not seeing it in the quantities we saw before. It's not as dominating as before. We didn't see Teamer putting up the results. But Saltai definitely did good this weekend. So what's going on with this deck? Well, again, a lot of the familiar faces that you're used to here, Bristling Hydra, the Scarab God, so on and so forth. But we got some new additions as well, including, surprise, surprise, Ravenous Chupacabra and Jade Light Ranger. I mean, these cards alone make you want to go probably more for the Saltai build, even if there wasn't bannings this past weekend. These cards are just that good. We also saw a moment of craving coming out of the sideboard. All right, let's look at a red-black aggro. So... First off, Mono Red Aggro was around, we saw Red Black Aggro, we also saw a White Red Aggro deck, so there were some variants out there that were very reminiscent of Ramen Up Red, honestly, and I'm going to show you a few of them today. We're going to look first at the Red Black one, but I'll be honest, all the variants were pretty similar. I mean, they had the same heart, the same core in the center of it, and Again, it's cards you're familiar with, but there were some significant changes, too, to some of these decks. Now, this one didn't have as big of a change. Fanatical Firebrand basically was the big change in this one, so not a huge difference, but the card itself actually is great and just lended itself in just the perfect way for this type of strategy. Teamer Monsters. We'll talk about those a little bit. Now, I mentioned at the top of the show that we saw a lot of Gruel Monsters as well. I mean, I showed you the Teamer deck list here because that did put up the best result, but Gruel Monsters isn't too different. One of the big differences you'll see in some of those decks is they're like running a one of Galta, and of course they're adjusting a little bit here and there. But again, the heart of these decks are very similar, and I mean, these are beat down decks. Some of the key cards that were from the new set, Rekindling Phoenix, which looked awesome this weekend, Jade Light Ranger again in another deck, Thrashing Brontodon in the main, but it's just a great card, a 3-4 for 3, even if you never use the ability, it's still a fantastic card to throw down on the battlefield. Next, we have Blue Black Control, which came in 8th place, and I mean, we saw Grixis Control in the last build, and a little bit of Blue Black Control, so this is an extension of that a little bit, but again, I think this deck actually gets better due to Rivals of Ixalan, so again, you have some of your familiar faces, Trenchal Gearhawk, the Scarab God, but you also get Moment of Craving in the main deck this time, and Ravenous Chupacabra shows up yet again. Out of the sideboard of this build, you got two more copies of Moment of Craving, and... Tetsumak, Primal Death, makes the first but not last appearance today. Merfolk. All right, so you're probably wondering when we're going over those top eights, hey, where was Merfolk? Merfolk looked like it was going to be a deck. Well, it just missed. It came in ninth, and the deck actually looks pretty good. So we're going to have to wait and see how it competes with the other decks. I mean, that's the big question. It was only week one, but the deck looked like it was pretty cohesive all in all. Is it going to be as competitive as some of the other decks we just looked at? Time will tell. But of course, as you can imagine, Rivals went a long way to making this thing a deck with a number of merfolk. Let's look at some of them. Miscloaked Heralds made the cut. Seafloor Oracle made the cut. Deep Root Elite made the cut. Jungleborn Pioneer was there. Kumina Tyrant of Araska is a 4 of. That surprised me a little bit. I thought maybe a 3 of, perhaps even a 2 of, but as a 4 of was in the deck. Merfolk Mistbinder, of course, was definitely a piece of this deck and needed to be. And when you look at the sideboard, you had Admiral's Order, which was a pretty cool sideboard card, actually, for a couple decks this weekend, and then Naturalize back again. Now let's move on to 10th place with Red White Aggro. And I mentioned this a little bit earlier when we were talking about Rakdos Aggro, that we had a variant that was also a Boros variant. So all of these, the Rakdos, the Boros, and the Mono Red, I mean, they have the same cards at their core, like I said earlier, but they're branching off in different directions, doing some different things with the extra color in some cases. In this case, the white is allowing you to bring things out of the board like Ixalan's Binding or play one of the new cards, which we're going to look at in just a few moments. Actually, a couple of the new cards, which are in red and white. 
Fanatical Firebrand, so we kind of expected that. We saw that in the Rakdos build, and this is just an awesome aggro card. But Relentless Raptor, one of the reasons to play white in this deck. I thought that was actually pretty cool. And another reason to play white, Path of Metal. Three copies of this showed up. And coming out of the board, Dire Fleet, Daredevil, and Rekindling Phoenix. I was a little surprised the Phoenix was in the board, especially three copies. But most of the other builds I was seeing were comfortable running these, or at least some in the main deck. This one was maybe a little bit different, but... Regardless, I mean, the card looked awesome this weekend. All right, this next deck, actually the top got cut off because the deck list was so long, but it's a Azorius Approach deck. And Azorius Approach looked really good at the beginning of the previous meta. And it looked like, especially with an addition of one new card that I mentioned during the preview season, felt like this deck could actually get stronger. And it definitely did. So it came in 11th here. We'll have to kind of wait and see if it can kind of break into a top eight or not. But at least right now, it has some promise. And the new cards that were impacting it was Baffling End. That was the one I was alluding to. This card, I said it right when it was previewed, that Approach decks sometimes had trouble dealing with some of the early threats. This is a great way to deal with some of those early aggro threats. Also ran a Arc of Araska, which, you know what? If your mana base can support it and the Approach deck can, why not run one of these? Because sometimes you'll get some benefit out of it. Sometimes you won't, but I think it's worth it. On the sideboard, we saw Nezahal, Primal Tide, Elder Dinosaur make an appearance as a one of good for any sort of like control matchup. Let's drop down the charts a little bit to 21st place. I want to showcase a couple of the decks that maybe didn't finish as high as the previous ones, but I thought were interesting. This was one of them. Black, red, mid-range. So some powerful cards here. I mean, you look at this deck list and you have things like Glorybringer, you have four Chandras, you're going to have a Braids, Fatal Pushes, Varaska's Contempt, Sweltering Suns. It just felt like a very powerful deck on paper, and this is a deck I kind of want to try out myself. It just seems kind of sweet. Some of the new cards that were part of the deck were Tetsamok, Primal Death, of course, and Rekindling Phoenix, which makes sense in this type of build. Also, out of the sideboard, we got Angreth again, Angreth the Flame Chained. Esper Gift coming in 28th place. I wanted to showcase this deck because I know a lot of people were curious whether this one would hang into the new meta. And I feel like it has potential still, even though it didn't have a huge weekend or anything. We'll have to kind of wait and see how the next few weeks go. But a couple of the new cards that enhanced it a little bit were Dusk Legion Zealot. That was actually kind of cool. And again, Ravenous Chupacabra. Esper Cycling coming in at 30th place. So didn't have a big weekend this week, but it hung in there at least. And I just want to quickly show the deck list. Hasn't changed much, of course, but I did want to point out at least one thing. It was running a copy of Profane Procession, which I thought was a pretty cool idea. This card saw some play out of some sideboards too this weekend, so not a ton of play with this card, but a little bit. I think it does have potential down the road. And then out of the sideboard, this had Baffling End and Moment of Craving. All right, let's move into the Star City Games Classic. A couple decks here that I wanted to showcase. This one being the first, Jim Davis's Blue White Auras. And this is just really cool. It kind of feels like a white weenie deck in some ways. But it's enhancing the creatures with auras. So you got a couple cartouches there, knowledge and solidarity. Sheltering lights are in here. And sacred cats, adorned pouncer. Seems like a really fun deck, and it put up a really nice result this weekend. We'll have to see if this can continue as the weeks go on. Some of the new cards we saw baffling in makes sense in this deck. Sky Marcher, Aspirant, perfect. Probably one of the enablers to make this deck possible, actually. And Curious Obsession being one of the auras that was there. Out of the board, we got another copy of Baffling End and Squire's Devotion. Teamer Dinosaurs. Yep, that's right, Teamer Dinosaurs. So not Gruel, not even Naya. But the deck that did the best with Dinosaurs was Teamer, coming in 7th place. And the deck looks sweet. I mean, it makes sense in some ways that it wanted to run some blue for some kind of light control elements. I mean, you get a Nissa Steward of Elements, 3 copies of that in the deck, so that's actually kind of sweet. Then out of the board, you have things like Admiral's Order, which we'll be looking at in just a second. So, yeah, the deck is kind of what you'd expect at the surface, right? Carnage, Tyrants, Registor, Alphas, Four Galtas. You got things like Reckless Rage, Communion with Dinosaurs. So nothing, like, surprising here necessarily, but it came together in a nice little package. And it's maybe a little surprising to see it running a tad bit of blue, but I felt like it made sense. So here's the new cards that we saw. Reckless Rage... Right, four dinosaur deck, you probably could guess that one. Rekindling Phoenix, not a dinosaur, but awesome. Four of Galta, I mean, that was actually kind of cool to see there. And also four of Thunderherd Migration. Out of the sideboard, like I mentioned before, was Admiral's Order. 
We have Thrashing Brontodon. Again, totally makes sense. You maybe could argue that this is main deckable, perhaps, but I think it makes sense out of the board because you have so many other great threats to cram into your deck. And then also, Silent Gravestone was being run out of the sideboard. And finally, I wanted to show you this is it Wins deck, which came in 10th place. And of course, key card here is Favorable Wins. And a lot of players were trying to make this work in the last minute. It didn't quite take off. See what I did there. But <laughs> this time, maybe it's got a chance. It has one big addition, and even though it's just one card, it's actually a pretty major addition, I think. And it's Warkite Marauder. This card actually is pretty amazing. So you throw this in with what you had before as a shell for this deck, and who knows? Maybe this is more powerful. And of course, again, with the bannings, the meta is going to change dramatically anyway. So this deck has some potential. It's definitely one to watch. All right, I hope that helps out a little bit. I just want to go over some of the decks, some of the sweet builds, and what Rivals cards are playing a role so you have at least a starting point to think about where you want to go in this next meta. Now, this was only week one. A lot's going to change. I mean, four or five, six weeks down the road, some of these decks will disappear. Others may emerge. Definitely a lot of them will get tweaked to be more streamlined. So there's going to be a lot of changes in the meta. This is just the beginning. But I wanted to at least give you a starting point to start thinking about what direction you want to go for your deck building. And hopefully it helps a little bit. Until next time, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe. Have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.